can he lean on abortion or should he not consider this to be the same card that could be played by Democrats in 2022? Well, look, the, the, when you're running a presidential campaign, what you realize is you want to fight on the ground where you're strongest. Biden has a 20-point lead with swing voters on the issue of abortion. It's an issue that you and Joe and I have talked about a bunch uh, that really helped the Democrats overperform in the 2022 elections. And so the Democrats are going to continue every single day for the next 204 days to wrestle this towards abortion uh, and away from immigration. Uh, the Republicans are going to try to wrestle it towards immigration. That's the fight we're going to have. I think the three of us would all say that that in the end, these swing voters are going to care the most about the economy, and both sides got to stay focused on that. You got to walk and chew gum at the same time. I think Democrats can talk about abortion and the economy. We'll see if the Republicans can talk about the economy and immigration. The evolution here has been quite remarkable, uh, Jim, for Republicans in Arizona, like Carrie Lake, like Congressman Schweikert, who had different messages. Carrie Lake specifically, but she was calling this a model for the rest of the nation two years ago and is now condemning this. How did Democrats handle that track record when it comes to reminding voters of the rhetoric on the other side? They're going to remember things that are said close to the election. Is it on Joe Biden? And, and Democrats running for House and Senate to catalog Republicans' rhetoric on this? Oh, absolutely. And you got to remind people what they said, and it's going to be a fight. You know, the Republicans are politically smart in trying to trying to come up with a new answer here. But as you guys know, this is the third time this year they've had a new answer. First, they were at six weeks. Then they were at 15. Mm -hmm. Now they wanted to kick it to the states. But then yesterday's Arizona ruling just blew up that argument, which is why they put President, former President Trump out there today to kind of nuance it and remind people that he's nuancing his argument. But in the end, that's just not the way voters process this. In the end, they will look at what people have said and decide whether or not this is the issue they're going to vote on. And for the voters who are going to vote on abortion, it's unlikely that Donald Trump or Kerry Lake are going to be able to nuance their argument. And likely the Republicans are going to want to spend their time talking about immigration. Well, as we talk about the, this idea that Joe's referring to on reminding people what some of these elected officials have said and done in the past. That is also something we have seen the Biden campaign trying to do with former President Trump when he was in office. How do you think, Jim, that the Biden campaign should be viewing this election in the idea of it being a referendum of some kind? Should this be cast as a referendum on the former president or a referendum on the man currently sitting in the White House? It is the central question. It is exactly the right question. Because when I was running Obama's campaign, I used to say to President Obama all the time, look, if it's a referendum on you, we lose. If it's a choice, we win. And what uh, Biden and his campaign have to do, want to do, is make it a choice, a very clear choice between he and Donald Trump. If it's a referendum on the economy, a referendum on the current incumbent, probably that argument is hard for as it was for every single Republican. You know, Obama got a whole bunch of things done, but in the end, I wanted the campaign to be about a choice, not the things he had gotten done. And that's likely going to be exactly what the Biden campaign is attempting to do. Well, as Joe Biden feels tailwinds here politically uh, from the issue of abortion, he's still got the border hanging over him, Jim Messina. And there is news following an interview that he conducted with Univision that he's going to take another swing at this after we saw this piece of legislation that was passed in the Senate uh, never even get a vote in the House. Executive action is what many Republicans have asked for, and I know that they have uh, criticized him for trying that in the past. He is now going to try to restrict the ability of immigrants to claim asylum, to narrow the definition of asylum through an executive order, admitting openly that he doesn't know if it will stand up in court. Does it matter if he gets this done or does he just need to be caught in the act trying? He needs to get caught in the act trying. I'm part of several presidential elections around the world, and migration, immigration is becoming the dominant issue around the world. And incumbents are losing all over the place because of this. And, you know, the Republicans played into Biden's hands by killing the border deal, which was a very good deal and voters really liked. But it's probably not enough. Probably the president has to go further um, and go on his own uh, and figure out what he can do and go do it. And I think that's what he said signaled last night as a Democrat. I'm very happy he's going to do this, and uh, and I hope it comes soon. Well, as we think about the things that President Biden will signal to do or talk about things that he has already done, I 
think a lot of us here in Washington had our attention caught today by some audio that was obtained by political, uh, Politico from Ron Klain, the former chief of staff, who essentially was speaking at an event last night saying that Biden is focusing too much on bridges. He said he's doing one or two or three events a week where he's cutting a ribbon on a bridge. Here's a bridge. Like I tell you, if it doesn't go into the grocery store and eggs and milk are expensive, the fact that there's a bridge is not, and then that becomes inaudible. But Jim, it kind of begs the question, is this campaign focusing on the right things? Infrastructure that may take much longer to materialize and actually turn into American jobs. Yeah, you know, when I saw that tape today, I had a little PTSD because it was usually me getting uh, <laughs> out on the mic, and I was super happy it wasn't me. Um, but but the truth is, this is what presidential campaigns have to do. They have to balance between talking about their record, because all the time you hear people say, oh, the Democrats suck at messaging. They haven't talked about what they what they did. Look at all these things they did. But as we all know, and you saw the CPI numbers today, voters still mm -hmm. are feeling inflation and they still are looking at and going to the grocery store every week and going to the gas pump and saying, hey, this is still too high. I want to know what people are doing. And that's the pull and, and tug. It's hard to do both. And the president is trying to do both. Um, I tried to do this both when I ran Obama. And in the end, we just said we're not going to talk about anything we did in the past after basically the summer. And we're going to drive a straight contrast between me and uh, between uh, Obama and Romney. And that's how we won that election. Pretty soon, I bet that's exactly what Joe Biden is going to do. How are they spending their time when you step back and look at the Biden campaign? And maybe you'll tell us that you're consulting uh, the Biden campaign Jim, are they spending time and money wisely at this point? I know there's a lot of noise in the air. We have 10 different headlines that change our course on this program on a day-to-day -day basis. But on a net level, how is the re-election effort going in your view? Well, look, uh, I'm not a consultant on them. I'm happily retired, so I can talk about it on TV with people like you two. Um, but <laughs> Got it. You know, when I look at this, here is the, the challenge is that you just... I ran 10 Senate races before I ran a presidential, and a presidential was so much different. Because to your point, every single day, something either goes right or wrong, and it can pull you off message. And so these folks in the Biden campaign have got to just be focused on three things, raising money, what they do with Joe Biden and Joe Biden's time, and driving a contrast with Donald Trump. And so those are the three things that I judge them on. That's the report card that they're going to get judged on. Um, and I'd mm -hmm. say that... You know, still early in this campaign. We're still over 200 days out. And the majority of these swing voters, these 8% of voters that could actually vote for both candidates, they are not even close to paying attention yet. Well, Jim, if we could go back to that number one thing you just mentioned, the idea of money, arguably, the report card on that looks pretty good. This president has shown pretty uh, strong fundraising prowess thus far. They have a massive cash pile, I believe the largest for the Democrats at this point in the race uh, in modern history. But what's the money worth if you're an incumbent president competing against a former president? Your name recognition for, for both of you is obviously extraordinarily high. How far does the money really go in a case like this? It is a great question. So to your point, Biden has a two to one cash on hand advantage, which historically would be amazing. Um, and that is a very big deal. But to your point, 100 percent of voters know both of these. What the money really goes for is two things, traveling around the country and making your case and direct voter contact. And really, you know, the kind of voter contact they have to do, Biden needs more money because it's harder to do what he needs to do, which is turn out difficult to turn out groups like minority voters and young voters. Typically, those are more expensive and harder to turn out. And then to talk to these 8 percent, maybe 10 percent at the very best of these swing voters. And those are the two things you have money and you need money for both of those. And that's where the cash on hand advantage is helpful. But it's not as determinative as it is in congressional and Senate races.